Hey, here's some more of 2013. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. A wheel with rotational inertia of this and a radius of that is turning at a rate of 10 revolutions per second when a frictional torque is applied, to, is applied to stop it. How much work is done? Well, the amount of work that's done to stop it um, is all of the work needed to stop it is taking all of the kinetic energy away. So if you know how much kinetic energy it has, well, that's how much work you need to do to stop it. You need to take all that kinetic energy away. So uh, we just need to figure out how much rotational kinetic energy does it have. So um, I've got one half, I've got the I. Uh, I just need to know um, what the omega is. And they gave us here in 10 revolutions per second. So let's see, 10 revs per second. And I know that one revolution is equal to two pi radians. So I just need to do this conversion. So it's 20 pi uh, radians per second. That's the conversion that you need to do there. So that means I've got one half times the rotational inertia, which is 0 0.04 times 20 pi squared. So it's going to be one of these pi squared ones. Um, this was back before you could put this in your calculator and to do it that way, but this is before calculators, so we should be able to do this. So let's see, uh, one half of that, that's 0 0.02 times, and then 20 squared is 400 uh, times pi squared. So uh, let's see, 0 0.02, that's the same as 2 over 100 times 400, so that's 4. So 8 pi squared. And if you're wondering why the negative signs, well, the work that's done is taking all that kinetic energy away. So you're doing negative work there to take away that kinetic energy. Um, 18. Uniform beam of weight W. And this looks familiar. You did a lab kind of like this. Um, and we saw lots of problems like this. Um, it's held horizontal by a cable attached to the end. The tension is T, the weight here, and they kindly put it where it belongs at the center of mass. What's the tension in the cable? Um, so, what we know is that the, well, we know the net forces on this are zero. The problem with that is there are forces here at the hinge that we don't know about. This, like Fy and Fx, that's what we usually called those. Um, but we also know the net torque is zero. So if the net torque, oops, sorry, I was all excited for making those pies in the last problem. Net torque is zero. And um, there's two competing torques. This wants to make it rotate this way, and the, the tension wants to make it rotate that way. And those two are balancing each other out. So you could write it as zero is equal to these two. Um, added together, or you could set them equal to, I think I'm going to just set them equal to each other since there's two competing torques. So torque is equal to force times radius times that angle, the sine of the angle, rather. So let's see. For this one, that's W times the radius where that's acting. It's acting at half the length of the thing. So that'd be L over 2. And if you're nervous that there's no L's in any of these, well, hopefully that'll cancel out, um, times the sine of theta. But here, the angle that this torque is acting at is 90 degrees. So sine of 90 would be just equal to 1. And then that's got to be equal to this torque, which is the tension force. And that's acting at the full length times the sine of that angle theta. So the L's cancel out, and I get W over 2 is equal to T sine theta. We're trying to solve for T, so that's going to be W over 2 sine theta. 
or answer choice B. Not a hard problem if you know how to do it. Um, here, an arrow of mass m and speed v sub 0 strikes and sticks to one end of a meter stick. Uh, meter stick is initially at rest. Speed of the center of mass of the stick arrow system. So this can move in a linear fashion. And this also, it's not on a fixed axis, so this can also move, um, which means that linear momentum will be conserved. It's also going to rotate, and that would be another like interesting, I could imagine a version of this problem where they had a number 20 that also, had to ref that also referred to this and did some angular momentum stuff. But they're only asking about um, the speed of the center of mass. So uh, that means momentum is conserved. So m v sub 0 is equal to after the collision, they stick together. Call that v final. So the final velocity, the center of mass of the system is c. That's all, just conservation of momentum. What else are you going to do? And look, looks like more momentum down here. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So object here, uh, mass m moving to the right with this speed, collides y, also mass m is moving to the right. So we actually saw this on the air track, and if you remember this, where an object collides into this one and they trade velocities. Remember that? Um, and let's see, after the collision, blah, 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 which of the following is true of the collision? It's elastic because momentum is conserved. Well, it, it is elastic, but not because momentum is conserved. It's elastic because kinetic energy is conserved. And it's really easy to see that if you did that, since they have the same mass, like the 1 half mv squared plus 1 half mv squared, it's equal because they have this just traded velocities. And this is the definition of what an elastic collision is. A collision is elastic um, if and only if the kinetic energy is conserved. If you have a collision and the kinetic energy is conserved, you know it's elastic. If somebody tells you it's elastic, then you know kinetic energy is conserved. Um, let's see what other wrong answers we have. It's inelastic because momentum is not conserved. Momentum is always conserved in a collision like this, if, things, if both of these things can move. So um, momentum is not conserved. Eh. Um, it's inelastic because kinetic energy is not conserved. Well, kinetic energy is conserved. More information is needed. No, 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 no. I hope you don't ever pick one of those answers. Um, so that's B. Number 21. Looks like 21 and 22 both refer to this. 20 kilogram box moving at an initial speed of 10 meters per second slides 25 meters to the right on a horizontal floor before it comes to a complete stop. What's the coefficient of friction between the box and the floor? There's a couple of ways to do this, I think. Um, let's do them both. So one way would be a kinematics approach. So here, it's going from 10 meters per second to a stop. I'd like to know what the acceleration is, and uh, that does that in 25 meters. So that looks like my Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2a delta x. Hey, that's on your equation sheet. Um, please be familiar with that. So 0 is equal to 10 squared plus 2 times a times 25. So math looks like a has to be negative 4 meters per second squared. That's what the acceleration is. Well, the only thing that's causing that acceleration on the box is the f force of friction. So the sum of all forces on the box is just equal to that negative frictional force. So the mass 10 times a, mass times acceleration, is equal to negative, and then friction is mu times the normal force, and the normal force is uh, 10, oh, sorry, 20, oops, sorry about that, 20 G. 
So canceling out the negatives, canceling out the 20s, it looks like mu is equal to 4 over g. And g is approximately equal to 10, so that's approximately equal to 0.4, and they'd like it for you to use 10 in these simple calculations like this. So that is going to be answer choice B. C. Uh-oh. supposed to be, what did I do wrong? I think I did something wrong. Um, I know because I have the answer key beside me here. I know that the answer choice, they have it as B. So let's see if we can figure out what did Mr. McGrath do wrong. Um, oh, it's here, sorry. Just bad math. This is 10 squared, 2 times 25, so this is negative 2. Sorry about that. Going a little too fast for my own good there. So that's negative 2, which makes this 2 over g, which makes that point 2, which makes the answer choice b. Now, um, the other way to do this is with um, energy considerations. So um, similar to a problem we saw just a few ago, if you happen to have watched that or remember, we had the, um, the kinetic energy of something. If you're going to stop something, then the change in kinetic energy is the work done. And since the work done here is a constant frictional force, that's just force times distance. And here it's kinetic energy. We're taking all of the kinetic energy away. So uh, plugging numbers into this, we have one half times the mass times its velocity squared, that's its kinetic energy. And here, friction force is mu times normal force, which is mg, 20 times g, which is approximately 10, times the distance, which is 25. And if you solve this from mu, from that equation, you get the same thing. There's lots of easy canceling out you can do. You can cancel out the 20s. The g cancels out with one of those 10s, approximately. So you get 5, 25 here, 5 over 25 is 0.2. So you can do it either way. Um, number 22. Which of the following best describes the frictional forces exerting on the box and on the floor? while the box is sliding. So let's see, which direction? Box is moving, so it's sliding to the right, right? So the frictional force on the box, if it's sliding to the right, friction is always the opposite direction. So the frictional force um, on the box has to be to the left. And this is an equal opposite Newton's third law pair so if the frictional force on the box from the floor is to the left, then the frictional force on the floor from the box is to the right, because they're equal and opposite. So I mean, before you did anything at all, since we're talking about an interaction, these, the only possible choices were the ones where they have opposite directions. Um, so that's answer choice E. <coughs> Number 23, a uh, block of mass M is pulled across a rough horizontal surface at a constant speed by a force of magnitude F at this angle, theta. Um, the coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the surface is. So it's pulled at a constant speed. That's important because that means that the forces are balanced. Let's make a force diagram. So I got my MG here. Here's my F, so I could break into mg uh, sine, wait, that's adjacent to that, sorry, that's cosine theta. And then here, that's opposite to that angle theta here, so this is mg sine theta. And then the normal force here, this plus this would equal this, and then the frictional force is equal to that because it's going at a constant speed. And they want to know what the coefficient of kinetic friction is between the block and the surface. So this is equal to, well, if I'm going to do it in terms of all these things, the 
the friction force is equal to mu times the normal force. And the normal force, since down forces equal up forces, mg sine theta plus the normal force. So let's say the normal force is equal to mg minus mg sine theta. Um, all right, so the coefficient of kinetic friction, what is it equal to? So the frictional force, which is equal to mg cosine theta, is equal to mu times... Oh, sorry, I have mg's in here. Why do I have those in there? These are, these are the components of f. I'm so sorry about that. I hope that didn't confuse you too much there. I'm not breaking... I'm probably, like you, used to breaking up the gravitational force, like for things on ramps, but that's not what we're doing here. We're breaking up that. So this is... That's what we have there. So um, that's mg minus f sine theta. So if we want to solve for mu, it's um, not mg, but f, f cosine theta over this. f cosine theta over that. That's e. Sorry about the mess there. So force diagram, that's a old school Chapter, gee, so that'd be chapter five, I think, maybe six. All right.